Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu. I'm here with Josh Hash. Hash. Man, oh. how did I know he's gonna say that? <laughs> um, I'm here with Josh Hash today to talk with you guys uh, about a situation that I saw with a client earlier this week. Uh, it was a young guy, actually pretty athletic, and um, he's been having trouble for um, quite a while. I don't remember exactly how long, but quite a while um, with uh, his inner thigh. And so what he was telling me was he had the most trouble when he was driving. And he just couldn't seem to figure out how to get this thing to go away. Anytime he went to do any kind of a hip hinge motion, he would feel his inner thigh kind of like the... Uh, high medial hamstrings and the adductors just kind of grab on him and then it would just hurt and hurt and hurt. So this was limiting his um, ability to do much exercise and to drive anywhere and he has to commute around visiting family, going to work, um, pretty far in the Bay Area and in the Bay Area there's tons of traffic so he's sitting in the car all the time. So Josh is going to be my uh, stand-in, my ersatz client. For those of you who know Erzots, um, <laughs> um, I don't. Good, the joke you're, went over my head. You're gonna be the Erzots <laughs> client. Um, I'm just gonna speak a little bit of German for the rest of the. No, I'm not. Never mind. Let's just stop. Um, so you're gonna sit down. Josh is driving his hoopty. Get some music on. No, <laughs> Know what a hoop do you? Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, uh, Josh is sitting here in his automobile. And uh, <clears throat> so, Josh is going to show you in a little bit of exaggerated form what happens to most people's hips and feet when they're driving. So, you can check this on yourself when you're in the car. But what you'll notice is uh, what tends to happen is you tend to get a lean over to the right side. You're, even if you go with this. Even if you go like that. It doesn't really matter because the key thing is that your right foot needs to do a bunch of maneuvering, right? It's got to hit the gas. It's got to hit the brake. Now, uh, because of that, you're doing uh, particular things with one side of your hips, uh, one side of your pelvis that you're not doing on the other side. So the left side is actually able to maintain some abduction. Um, it's able to maintain some glute activation. Whereas the right side, you're often using the quads and you're using the hip flexors here to help you kind of shift over. If you're hitting the gas, you're kind of you're kind of lifting the leg a little bit and using your ankle to pump, uh, pump the gas or pump on the brakes. So uh, when you're doing that, so that was perfect. So when you go over to the brake, right here, the whole front of the hip is active. That's down regulating activity of your right glute. Right, so you're tending to turn off your glutes on the right side. Now he's driving. <laughs> he's a eight-year-old driving a <laughs> big rig, I think. <laughs> uh, when that foot moves over to say hit the brake, what else is firing is the adductors, and and uh, those are going to start to get more and more activated over time the more and more you're sitting there in the car if you're in traffic you're using them more and more and more and so this was exactly the situation that was bugging my client now here's what ended up helping him um, a little bit of stretching for the inner thigh actually made a big difference in terms of comfort so one really easy stretch that you can do especially if you're on road trips for a while let me have you stand up what you can do is you can just get out of the car you can, <clears throat> yep, just like that, stand just like that. If you want to, you can hang on to the door. If the door's right here, if you don't need it, you don't need it, but just bam, you're right there. You're stable and steady. You can play around with where your foot is, right? So Josh is showing you, um, you know, he can have his foot just the toes down like this. If he has an up, um, he can get a little bit of a different stretch. Where do you feel it when your toes are pointing super vertical? If you can get it vertical. Yep, right in there. Yep. Right in there. So you get this really solid, solid stretch through the uh, medial hamstrings and also um, adductor magnus is a really big adductor muscle um, that can really get jammed up in there. Um, how's that feel? What do you feel? This is a little bit more towards the anterior um, side of the, the leg. Okay, so a little more of those anterior adductors straight yep. down the middle-ish. So you can kind of play around with that to find the spot that feels like the best stretch. You hold that for at least a minute, preferably two minutes, but... If you're on a road trip, you probably don't have the uh, attention span to hold it that long. Um, 
One thing that uh, is really common when you're doing adductor stretches is you might feel the stretch around the knee. Um, and if that's the case, it's fine. Just be gentle and just gradually stay in that stretch and let that stretch migrate up into the, into the actual muscle belly. So if, it, if you feel it tight here, that's fine. It's pretty common, especially when you've never stretched this area before, and then it'll gradually start to move up as it relaxes. Uh, it may take a couple times before that actually happens, but again, be gentle, be mindful, be conservative about it. Don't try to push through the stretch. Just stay wherever you feel that tension and let that go. So that's one thing that was really helpful for, uh, for uh, Ian on uh, whatever day that was, Monday, Tuesday. Um, Another thing that was real helpful, if you want to throw that on um, just under your knees. Another really helpful thing that you can do that's super nice after you've been sitting at a computer or sitting in the car for a while, uh, I just keep it in the shins and let's do the, uh, let's do this. So Josh is just going to be, again, leaning uh, on his car seat or on his computer seat and he's going to have a little bit of uh, external rotation in, yep, yeah, so he's got external rotation with his femur, and then he's gonna to try to bring his leg back. So he's gonna get hip extension with this, and that's gonna turn on his glute. Now he can play around with different angles, but for right now he's just going straight back and just firing. So you can probably see it um, in HD. His butt muscles are firing right here on this right side. And if we want, we can kind of go a little bit. left side to show. There we, there we go. Another angle. I don't know if the camera can handle that. We'll see. Uh, I think it's still working. All right, so get a little more external rotation. There we go. So you can play around with how much external rotation you're doing, but ideally you want to feel all butt muscle. You might feel a little bit of hamstring going. Um, you can also go with the angle a little bit diagonal or the angle a little bit out like perpendicular, kind of like a fire hydrant. So you want to show them a little fire. Yeah, just like that. You want to focus on getting this side. Um, you might also feel the opposite side, the, the supporting leg. Yeah. That's totally fine. Um, you just want to try to focus on getting this to fire. Uh, when you're doing this with a resistance band, you want to try to use one that's relatively light so you can get a big range of motion. Um, otherwise, you end up finding you only get like six inches of motion and you just cheat your glutes out of that. Um, now, doing those things just once or twice didn't solve his problem, right? Um, what really had to happen was constant, constant, constant reactivation. And it's not going to be like a Oh, I did that for one day and everything's perfect, right? Like, that's, is that how you accomplish anything with your deadlifts or bench or anything? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. So it takes time and it takes constant reminder for your body to learn that new pattern. So uh, the good thing was that in and about 50 minutes to, I think it was about 50 minutes because we did end a little bit early, about 50 minutes of just focusing on getting those butt muscles to fire, he was then able to do stuff like, bend forward without that cramping. He could sit down without feeling that jam up on him. He could even lift his leg, which was another problem, and it would jam up. He could lift his leg and feel like that butt muscle was firing. And uh, especially with somebody like that who's an athlete, it's pretty noticeable when you can feel the right muscle firing. And he, he just said like, whoa, I can't, whoa, it's, it's on, it's on, it's on, which is a huge victory. But those types of things, again, need to be uh, repeated, repeated, repeated to really make that change. Um, so hopefully those two little exercises give you some good ideas, give you something to work towards, uh, and hopefully you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs>